All right, so I'm working solo and I meant to get video of me assembling this transmission, but working solo here and trying to do this and film, it's, it's, it's taxing. So this case is worn. I got the 4L60E Sprague in there. I have the uh, 350 uh, Sprague from this case. And I pressed the old sp um, Sprague out, the outer race for the Sprague. And I pressed the 4L60 Sprague in, the 350 um, pressure plate there. And I JB welded it before I pressed it. I let it sit overnight. I got the uh, the wider sprag in. The anti clunk spring is in for the uh, the case here, and the snap ring is holding the anti clunk spring in place. You'll notice that there's a flat spot on the anti clunk spring, and there's a curved spot. That snap ring holds that anti clunk spring in place. Okay, and you also got to engage that last tab when putting that snap ring in. All right. Uh, if you now, here, here's a scenario here for you. If you put that snap ring in and it is too close to where it bumps that, that clunk spring, what will happen is this snap ring is only a set diameter. If that is not in, if that snap ring is not engaged in that last tab and you have it shifted over, when that, when this pressure plate clunks up against that spring, it'll bounce that snap ring out of place, cause all kinds of trouble. Here's the here's the plate that took about a day to make. Now, as you can see, see how much that case has shifted? That's how much it ate into the case. Because that anti clunk spring is is making that pressure plate shift to where it clunked into the case. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's why I put these case savers in here. All right, so let's get this thing together and uh, we'll go from there. So when you go to tighten these up, it'll pull that pressure plate centered and it'll load that anti-clunk spring. So now you got two areas holding on that pressure plate. If you strip that, you got other problems, bro. I'm gonna put the rest of these in. When you put these bolts in, use a non-fouling Loctite. Okay, that means there's no solids. You don't want any solids getting in there and just use a drop. All right, as you can see, it's bolted in. It's solid. Torqued. And moving on at this point. All right, so I got rid of the plastic one. And I got these bushings uh, online. It came as a kit. And I just rather use the metal ones. And I also have a full set of bearing, roller bearings that are going here. Uh, let's get this. Uh, this is the sun gear. It's all been checked out. It's not really worn out. It's a pretty good unit still. So I just pressed new bushings in it, cleaned it up. It's going back in. So I use a plastic bushing, okay, just because the, the metal one that goes in here, they usually scar the shaft and uh, part of the bushing actually seizes onto the shaft there. So I just like using a plastic one. I've taken the plastic ones out of 200,000 mile transmissions with no problems and it still looks good. So 
I'll, I'll, I'll use the plastic one there. Everywhere else, I'll get rid of the plastic. I'll put a, a brass, a, a brass or metal bushing, and again, um, all bearings. So, going on to the next phase or the next step. All right, this right here is a Ford Planet. It's going to go in. Now, when you clean these, um, even if they don't rock or don't have play, what you got to do is after you clean these, spin them, okay? Spin them while they're dry. And this will, you can hear them. If they sing to you, that means it's going to go bad. But if it still spins and you, and you can hardly hear it, and it's more of a whirling instead of a singing, then you're still good, okay? This comes with a bearing. All right, now sometimes these can be a little tight and you don't want to use a wooden hammer or a metal hammer. You just want to use a plastic hammer. hear that overrunning clutch working now. Grab both these, turn that, that's allowing the overrun clutch to slide. Now you want to get that little snap ring on. That's going to go on there. I'm going to need both hands for this one so hang tight. There you go. Next thing I'm going to use is here's the old uh, here's the old one. Okay, I did stack a shim underneath that rear bearing all the way in the case here. So I got a bunch of those shims. Only you know they're like this. I put the thinnest one in the bottom. And anyways, um, so I'm going to get rid of this, but I'm going to hold on to it. Okay. And I'm going to put a new one in there. There you go. All right, now I had to use one of these out of my stock because the other one was worn really, really bad and chewed up. But uh, just give you a little rundown. I do uh, polish these with uh, Scotch Brite, and I do make sh I do run a uh, stainless wire wheel over all the sharp edges. Okay, just not around here, but all the sharp edges in general. Like um, for instance, the apply plates. Let me just get rid of that. These I run a wire wheel knock off all the burrs, sharp edges, just so everything uh, contours nicely, slides into place. Um, but yeah, I had to size this bushing. That bushing has been honed to size, so um, had to do that. Um, so now, there. It's nice. Nice and smooth. Another thrust. All right, I got the forward drum uh, in my stand, and this has all been wire wheeled. These holes have been chamfered. 
this has been scotched uh, smooth and I took a chunk of the old bushing off. This is that's the reason why I use a plastic one. I don't like putting the, the metal bushing. Um, just depends on who builds a transmission. So uh, this has all been cleaned up, ready to go in. Seals are on the piston and everything's clean, ready to go in place. And I'm just going to throw this together. All right, seals in, and this is what I use. Crude but effective, right? Huh? Harmonic balancer puller tool. Put that in the press. There you go. Going to stack the clutches in. Okay, just going to backtrack a little bit here. Uh, I took that metal bushing out, and the reason why I did that, I'm going to be installing, I'm reinstalling this plastic one. Okay, because the drum right here is just a little worn. I mean, it it's I that's a shadow right there, but um, yeah, it's just a little worn. Now, if this was a new drum, or if this was completely flat and didn't didn't have any wear marks, yeah, I would go ahead and use that uh, steel one or the the, the metal one, and uh, go from there. But um, yeah. So I'm going to reuse that plastic one. Now this is not a high stall torque converter. I consider a high stall torque converter more than 3500. This one, this one right here is 28 to 3200. Alright, so I'm going to reinstall the wave because it's not a high stall torque converter. And there's three contact points here, okay? One, two, three. All right. And you're going to see a high wear mark somewhere in this drum. Okay. You want to identify where that mark is, and it's right there. So you want to make sure that you do not put the wave in that same location. You want to use a different location. Kind of hard to do this one-handed. There you go. There you go. Clutch pack all together. Clearance is good. They're a little tight, and that's because of the fluid that's still on the clutches. But there is 40. Okay. All right, this is a piston that's been grinded down. Originally, this had four clutches in it. It is now set up for a five clutch uh, drum. And this is a two, uh, two tenths, uh, 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 shit. And this is a, uh, a two tenths pressure plate, okay? All right, this drum right here, I'm going to convert this to a full complement piston. Okay, what does that mean? Full complement piston is it'll use both surface areas instead of just this surface area or this surface area. There is a seal that's supposed to go in here and seal on this piston, okay? Well, I'm going to leave that seal out because I want both, both areas of the piston to apply at the same time. Now, if you got a lockup uh, 350, you can't um, you you can't do that. Okay. So, but there's other ways to get around it in that transmission. But this is going to be a full complement piston. Okay. So when it does apply, it applies the complete surface area between this seal and this seal, not just this seal and where the drum seal rests in here, or where the drum seal rests in here. To this outer one all right so I'm gonna get that in there and this drum here when you put this snap ring in okay you want to make sure that that opening of the snap ring is away from these uh, these hill these these tits right here okay and you want to make sure that the snap ring and opening isn't between or or near this opening here 
and between the tip. All right. So that's how I put mine. I'll get these steels in here and frictions. Two frictions, three, four, there you go. Alright, there's my five frictions in there, okay? And there's the clearance. They got 35 to 40, and that's... That is actually probably 20, but there's fluid, so that fluid takes up space, so, yeah. And I already pre-measured this anyway, so it's all good. Got enough clearance in there. Now it's a five clutch drum. All right, so that's why you gotta make sure that this bushing is below where this ledge is, okay? Because this bearing goes in there just like that. All right, now I'm gonna place this on that. And there it is. It's all the way down. Okay. Spins nice. Moving on. All right, here's their roller, your, oh, duh. Here is your uh, roller clutch. See how that w works? It ramps up, pushes those rollers out, this has been scotch brighted already, see, only goes one way. I'm going to get this snap ring on. One uh, side note here. When you put this snap ring on, you want to make sure that this snap ring covers that ear and this ear over here. Okay? Don't put it like this. There you go. Now you want to take this assembly right here, this drum assembly. You gotta wiggle, move it, you gotta line those clutches up. Alright, it's gonna take both hands, so hang tight. 